Hi, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. A few weeks ago I did a video on how to install a coax connector and I did it on RG8X and it took a couple of minutes to do it. Since that time I've gotten a lot of emails uh, from guys asking me to install a coax connector onto RG213 or LMR400 and the process is really the same and it's maybe takes a little more muscle but it's frankly pretty simple and uh, the way I'm going to do it is to crimp the coax connector and one of the things that I got in emails and there were some questions posted on the uh, on the other video was a uh, guy said well I always solder my coax connectors because I want all my connections to be soldered well it's okay to say that but really all your connections aren't soldered uh, when you take a PL259 and you shove this pin into an SO239 that's just a compression uh, fitting there's usually two to four tangs on the SO239 as you push in the pin it spreads those tangs just a bit that's not a solder connection it's really a compression connection so there's no reason not to crimp a coax connector and in many ways it's a much better coax connector uh, oftentimes when the solder is sorry when the shield is soldered uh, it's a cold solder joint and I watched a video of a guy do one on YouTube and clearly when he was finished the, the solder looked uh, gray and jagged and rough uh, solder didn't flow anyway I'm going to uh, make a jumper and I'm going to crimp the coax connector and I'll show you how I do that and that part of the video will probably take uh, about 10 minutes but it's uh, in actuality the time to do it is probably uh, two to three minutes uh, I'll also show you how to adjust a rotary coax prep tool or stripper and that's really pretty simple but that seems to confuse a lot of people and it's just a matter of uh, adjusting some set screws anyway I've set up a tripod, I've got a little table over here, I've got some lights focused down on the table and I'll go over there and I'll install a, a, a PL259 onto RG213. Um, the reason why I'm doing it is I need a, uh, another um, jumper, if you will, um, for a delay line to some Yaggies I have out in the yard, uh, backyard. Explain it real quick, I have two Yaggies on separate towers. Uh, they're both 20 meter four element Yaggies. Uh, I use and switch in delay lines to one of the Yaggies to adjust the, the pattern just a bit. And I, I have vacuum relays uh, mounted in a box that are on the wall and with a switch box. And I'll do a video on that too. That's, that picks different lengths of coax to one of the Yaggies as a delay line. And I can shift the pattern just a bit. And it makes a significant difference. It's uh, really kind of interesting. Anyway. Enough of that. Let's go put on a PL259, um, see how it goes. It's really pretty simple, and um, I think you'll find it interesting. So, switch over to the table. Let's first uh, take a look at what we're trying to do. Trying to strip the coax, uh, prepare the coax, and have it look something like this, where there's about three-eighths of an inch of braid, a little bit of dielectric showing, and the center conductor. And actually we're going to make the center conductor a bit longer than that. And then when we get through crimping and soldering the tip, it's going to look like this. And we want the solder to be shiny uh, and like it's flowed into the uh, into the pin. So this is what we're trying to do. And let's go over the tools that we would typically use or that I would typically use. Um, this is really handy. These are uh, coax cable cutters so for trimming or cutting off the coax they're great and we'll use it for a couple of things a rotary stripper uh, this one is labeled for RG8 so it does RG11, RG213 a sharp knife this one's great because I can swap out the blades some kind of soldering iron or gun uh, this gun has seen better days, but uh, I think we can make it work. Uh, normally I'd be using my soldering station, but it's, uh, it's not available right now. 
um, a crimp tool. This is a crimp frame, and that's the die. And the um, uh, size of the uh, the die cavity that we need for RG213 is 0.429, and that's that's right here. Uh, I like this tool because it's laminated. It's four four layers thick. It's strong as hell. Um, and it does a good job and it never fails and of course a good quality coax connector like this one this happens to be a nickel plated connector I also sell uh, silver plated <clears throat> so here's the uh, the ring or ferrule the barrel and the body of the coax connector And it basically breaks in, into uh, into three pieces. So let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the coax that I already have, and I'm going to trim off this uh, this end. So I'll set these out of the way. So I'm just going to cut this flush. And one thing that comes up fairly frequently is how to adjust this rotary stripper or coax prep tool. And it's really pretty easy. Uh, typically they're shipped pretty close to where they should be with the uh, set screws pretty much flush. Um, <coughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it first and see how it works with the, uh, with the factory settings. And I'm going to do it on the end. I don't We'll talk about where to place it in a minute. So usually about three rotations is enough. Okay, that actually did pretty good. Um, it looks like it didn't uh, didn't nick the shield. It could be a bit deeper on the uh, cutting through the dielectric. So let's. Um, in in the uh, bottom of these tools is um, an Allen wrench. So I'm going to move the set screw. It says plus rotate uh, clockwise. So I'm going to rotate it one full turn, and I'm going to repeat the process and see how it does. Now I don't expect it to cut all the way down. I just want to kind of get close. And that's looking pretty good. actually all right I think I'm gonna make it a little bit deeper yeah just a tad deeper so maybe um, Maybe another half turn. There is a half turn. All right, so let's um, let's prepare the coax. All right, now where to position this on the coax is easy. You want to put it in a place where you're going to have plenty of center conductor to extend past the pin. I want it to protrude. So I'm going to place it about there, and that, gives, that should give me enough center conductor to be able to trim, trim off the end of it. So let's do about three to four rotations, and we're good. And that's about right. And that's about right. Now here comes the hard part, and that's where this tool is going to help out. Uh, trimming off the, or rather, removing the, the dielectric can be hard if it's really good coax, because sometimes the, um, the way they form this stuff, it's really on there good and tight. So I'm going to use this tool, see if I can pull it off. And I am. And it 
It's being tough. Okay. Now that is extra long, and I've done it on purpose. Uh, one thing I don't want to forget to do is to uh, put on the barrel and the ferrule or ring. So the, the blades on the tool set this cutting dimension, which I stretched a bit when I was pulling on this, and that's fine. I only need about three eighths of an inch of shield to make good contact with the uh, with the coax connector. So as I slip it on, the shield's going to go up and over, just like that. So let's see. Um, I want to make sure I don't have any strands protruding past that point, and I don't. It actually looks really good. So push this up, and then take the tool. <coughs> now. Uh, a little explanation here. In uh, 1998 I fell and broke my neck so I'm not real strong and I'm going to have to use the table um, to help crimp this thing. So I'm going to um, set it down like this. Alright, that is crimped. And let's um, go ahead and solder the center conductor. And to do that, I'm going to, there's a bit of a cut in it uh, to allow you to put your soldering iron onto the center conductor and the metal of the coax connector at one time. So if I get this old gun to heat up, okay, had to go plug in the iron. So now it's working. So I'm going to put this on the coax connector and on the cent center conductor at the same time. Let's see if I can zoom this in a bit. And you can see how the uh, solder is flowing. That should be a good solder connection. I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to trim off the excess flush with the end of the pin and we're basically done and that's that's a good coax connector that's nice and shiny it's also hot uh, there's no strand sticking out here uh, is it watertight no you need to seal it with like raincoat tape but uh, it's a good connection and we'll test it. And the, how you test this this coax connector is to transmit through it. Um, I know there's lots of folklore about licking your thumb and sticking your thumb on it and reading it with an ohmmeter. That's that's all CB stuff. You don't want to do that. Uh, you can put an ohmmeter on see if there's a short, but it really doesn't tell you anything about the quality of the connector. So the best way to test it is to transmit into it and see how it works. So I've made myself a jumper. Um, in really just a few minutes and that's how you put on a coax connector and that's the right way to do it okay well that's how you put on a coax connector as you can see it's really pretty easy it's uh, video is kind of low-key because there's not much to get excited about it's just sort of mundane uh, just the uh, coax prep tool uh, strip the coax put on the coax connector crimp it solder the pin reason for soldering the pin is uh, for the ones I sell on my website I I do the um, kind where you do solder the pin and you can crimp the pin and that, that works great but sometimes it deforms the pin and since the coax connectors I have are for LMR4, LMR400 and RG213 um, sort of one size fits all so soldering the pin is really the only option for that. Anyway, if you uh, found it interesting give me a thumbs up might want to subscribe. In any case, thanks for watching. We'll see you the next time. This is Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics.